Hello and thanks for joining us today on City Talk. I'm Maria Soreo. We are here today at Abalone Cove Park where you will see a very special unveiling. So let's begin our program today by hearing from our mayor, Eric Alegria. Oh, today's a very special day. We're unveiling a, a monument that celebrates the Tongva people. And for those of you who don't know, the Tongva people were our original inhabitants of the peninsula in this area. Uh, so it's just um, so appropriate that we take the time to celebrate uh, all their contributions to the peninsula. You know, it's so amazing because the history is so rich here, and I don't think people are really aware of that. This is true. I actually happen to be from a, a reservation in Washington State myself, uh, so I have a, a sincere appreciation for, you know, the hi history of indigenous peoples. Obviously, this week concludes, uh, you know, Monday was Indigenous Peoples Day. So it's a great way to sort of cap off a week of celebration of the native people. And I know that also this has been a joint effort also with a family in Rancho Palos Verdes. Is that correct? That's correct. A joint effort over five years. So, you know, sincere appreciation to those who contributed to it. We're going to celebrate them as well today. So it's a truly a day of celebration for our entire community. This is, you know, outstanding. I mean, uh, the fact that we can come out here and uh, celebrate the uh, heritage of the peninsula and our native people, this is so special uh, to really give homage to some of the first people that lived here uh, and enjoyed this beautiful coastline, this beautiful area. It's really tremendous that we can pay homage to them and, uh, uh, and honor their uh, contributions and their history. It's also so amazing when you talk about history of Rancho Palos Verdes. A lot of people don't know about this, so to bring a plaque like this out, a monument, and really educate everybody is amazing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, as much as we can highlight our history and the heritage of the area and the folks that came before us, I think is outstanding, especially for some of the people that are growing up in the area that may not understand uh, the uh, native contribution uh, to the area and folks that were here and the indigenous folks that were here in the local area um, years ago. I also know that um, everybody on your council will be here today. I mean, it was such a special day. And th this is also possible because of donations by families as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I believe all five council members are going to be here because it's such a cool uh, opportunity to honor the heritage. Um, also, you know, coming out of COVID, you know, this is one of the first big events that we're able to have to be able to share with the community some of these things. So this is just an outstanding opportunity to go do that. Looks like your turnout's pretty good today here. Absolutely. I'm glad I got here a little bit early or else I wasn't even going to get a parking space. So, no, this is a, a phenomenal turnout. So it's uh, very exciting to see. So the Tongva Indians, you know, called the San Gabrielinos later on, um, were here both in Los Angeles County and in Orange County. And it was the proximity to the coastline um, that brought them here, apparently, um, because there was uh, the ocean to be, you know, pulling food from. There was also vegetation here. But they had establishments and homes all over this area. Um, and it's quite amazing. In the 1960s, um, a woman named Eleanor Bates actually did um, a dissertation. It's either master's thesis or a dissertation, and she pointed out all of the different Tongva sites, the archaeological sites that are here on the peninsula. So it's really quite amazing, um, you know, that we have. Um, well, that we're doing this, but, um, you know, that we have that prehistory, as it's called, um, here right on the peninsula. Um, it's just amazing. What a beautiful day in Ranch Palace Verde. So thank you for joining us. Uh, we do have several folks visiting us today, uh, of which I'll, I'll introduce momentarily. And before we start the special ceremony today, I, I want to give special tribute to someone special to the city of RPV. So it happens today to be one of our city founders' 90th birthdays, and he's currently on our city council. So, Councilman Dida, on behalf of the whole community, if I may, on three, maybe we can say happy birthday. One, two, three, happy birthday. We love you and thank you for all your contributions to the city and the community. So with that, thank you all for coming out today to celebrate this special day. Uh, as you know, last Monday was Indigenous Peoples Day, so it seems quite appropriate that we've gathered to get today to celebrate the rich history, culture, and legacy of the Gabrielino Tongva San Gabriel Band of Mission Indians, the first peoples of the Los Angeles Basin. This is a very special day, one that would not have happened without the dedication, inspiration, and perspiration of a host of people who came together over the last five years to make this dream a reality. So throughout the ceremony, we'll be sure to recognize those fine folks. As I was preparing for today, I thought of a, a piece of a quote 
Lord Acton described history as an illumination of the soul. I always thought that was quite intriguing. And so today it seems quite appropriate to me that we're here to celebrate the illumination and illuminate our souls as well as those that came before us and contributed so meaningfully to this land that we inhabit today. I'd like to recognize my fellow council members. So Mayor Pro Tem Dave Bradley, Councilman Crookshank, Councilman Dida, and Councilman Ferraro. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Wonderful, Councilman Ferraro. And then I'd like to welcome Councilman Dida up to say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a little side note. Uh, the Rancho Palos Verdes Historical Society, uh, I incorporated that in 1975. And our first goal was to mark uh, with a plaque all of the significant uh, historical places, OK? Uh, there are 16 of them that we have plaqued. We have, we've stopped plaquing because we've got into another uh, issue. But uh, what I have today is I've got some maps that will not only describe what the location is, but it'll show you where that location is. So those of you who would like a map of where we've plaqued a lot of significant historical places, see me afterwards and we'll give you some. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's such a beautiful day. I'm Assemblymember Al Maratucci. I have the privilege of representing the Palos Verdes Peninsula in the California State Legislature. I, am also, I also have the privilege of uh, being a resident of this beautiful uh, Palos Verdes community uh, for the past six years. My daughter goes to our local schools here. And uh, I really wanted to thank Mayor Alegria. Happy birthday, Councilman uh, Dida, and the entire city of Rancho Palos Verdes for making this happen. You know, I was talking with, uh, with Tom Steers, who I, I, I believe is going to be sharing uh, his story about how he started talking with um, the Gabrieleno Tongva uh, tribe uh, to, to get this conversation started to lead to this uh, uh, wonderful unveiling to recognize, of course, that this beautiful land belonged to the Gabrielena Tongva indigenous people. And, uh, you know, when Tom was talking about how he would take, you know, his hikes around here and, and like so many of us enjoy, you know, the, some of the most beautiful vistas that we have in this entire state of California, you know, this monument is going to help us, you know, remind us and, and teach us about the history of the Gabrielena Tongva people. You know, my, my daughter, I, when I was talking to her this morning and I was asking her, do you know about the Tongva? And, uh, you know, I, I was expecting her to, to say no. She said yes. You know, I said, oh, how, how, do, how do you know about the, 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 the Tongva people? And she said, I, I learned it in school. You know, she went to uh, Cornerstone Elementary here in Palos Verdes. And, uh, and, and, and I, I see some, here's some Cornerstone moms here, maybe, or, or dads. But uh, she pulled out some of her projects, you know, when, when she was studying about the Spanish missions, uh, and, and, you know, I, I knew that she studied about the Spanish missions, but she showed me how, you know, at, as part of her education at Cornerstone, they were talking about, about the history of the Gabrielena Tongva people, about how, you know, the, the Spanish missionaries, you know, how there was, you know, so much violence and so much tragedy uh, involved in that history. And so, you know, I was so happy that, uh, that uh, she was learning this in our schools, in our local schools. And now I'm so happy that we're going to unveil this monument today that's going to be, you know, a, a further a benefit to our community so that we can learn about this history and hopefully uh, become better people from it. So many people contributed to making this monument a reality from Tom Steers, uh, who recognized the need for it, to my friend Susan Brooks, who uh, started the process in the city council to the revered Tongva elder Julia Bogany, who we lost earlier this year. To Chairman Anthony Morales and to the renowned native artist J. 
Jerry Gould, who, who designed and sculpted this monument. But this is more than just about a monument. It's about telling the truth of the history of this land. For too long, Native American history and the dark reality of what this country did to our first peoples has been erased and many times ignored. We have a long way to go in making up for the many injustices committed against Native communities, but we must start by at least telling the truth. And I think by what we're doing here today, we are going in the right direction. I never show up empty-handed to an event, so I have two scrolls. Um, one I would like to present to the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, um, signifying what we're doing here today and joining with you as we recognize the Gabrielino Tonka as the first peoples of the Los Angeles Basin. Eric, if you would present this, and I've been told my photographer to move up here. <laughs> And then Chairman Anthony Morales, if you'd come up here, I also uh, wanted to present you an official scroll on behalf of the County of Los Angeles, um, honoring the legacy of the Gabriel and Otanga San Gabriel Band of Missions, and noting that today uh, we are honoring you by unveiling this monument. Thank you, Thank you Chairman. And now I have the great pleasure of inviting Chief Anthony Redblood Morales of the Tongva San Gabriel Band of Mission Indians to lead us in a traditional blessing and prayer. So Chief Morales, if you would, please join me. Uh, greetings and welcome to all of you. Uh, my, uh, our opening prayer will be in... in uh, it's, our songs are also our prayers, and in a few moments we're going to do that, our blessing, our opening ceremony, with a, an honor song to the ancestors, the ones who have taken their final journey, and the ones that we come after. And it'll be a, a, an ancestor honor song, uh, a, a flute song, And but uh, right now I just want to just verbally open it up by by saying uh, again, meiha yo yehia means welcome and greetings to all of you in our language. Um, my name is uh, Chief Anthony Morales from the Gabrielino Tongva San Gabriel Band of Mission Indians. And um, uh, we are the direct lineal descendants of that ancestry that built the San Gabriel Mission Indian 250 years ago. They're in their jubilee year as we speak. And um, I, I'm not going to go into all the, uh, well, the treatment and the bad history that was imposed on my people. I think the assembly member did a good job of doing that, and, and, and so does uh, Supervisor Hahn. Uh, we know that there was atrocities, uh, there was uh, enslavement, uh, abuse, but that's a chapter in our history that we cannot let ever let be forgotten. And um, I, I just want to say that now, in today's time, I, I think it's, it's our opportunity to be heard, to be vocal, because Native Americans are the least heard people. And this is our original land, but we're yet the least heard people. But uh, that being said, I also want to share with you that uh, our beloved Julia Bogany who passed away this last spring, uh, her vision was that now, not only do we need to be verbal or heard, now it's time for us to be visible. And it's, we need to be visible. And I, and I think that what, uh, what, the, uh, what the Los Angeles City Council did on Monday at their press uh, conference, uh, acknowledging Indigenous Day, as well as President Biden, who signed that proclamation making uh, last Monday 
Indigenous Day along um, by his side was the first Native American woman uh, Secretary of the Interior, Deb Hadland. So um, it, 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 it's very meaningful and, and uh, it's an honor that finally, finally, we are going to be visible. Uh, so with that being said, I, I want to welcome uh, Julia's granddaughter, who was, who was always accompanying Julia everywhere Julia went. Julia was involved in oh, so many projects with the local universities and uh, with Metro, with Caltrans, uh, helping design murals and bridges and uh, you s <laughs> name it, she did it all. So uh, this is her land acknowledgement that she wrote specifically for today, but ironically, she's taking her journey and uh, I, I pass it on to her granddaughter, Larissa. Hello everybody, my name is Marissa Ronda. My native name is Dancing Butterfly and I stand here with my sister Jasmine Aranda. We're both Julia's great granddaughters. And today I'm gonna re read her land acknowledgement. This was written by her, so here we go. We, the Indian people, the traditional caretakers of this landscape, are the direct descendants of the first people who formed our land, our world during creation time. We have always been here. Our ancestors prepared and became the landscapes and world for the coming humans with order, knowledge, and gifts embedded in the landscape. Our ancestors imbued the responsibility and obligation to our original instructions, guided by protocol and etiquette to be part of, take care of, and ensure the welfare of the extended family and community, defined in its most inclusive expression, the nature, and to pass those teachings and responsibilities onto our children, grandchildren, and many children to come, and to all those that live here. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. Uh, at, this, at this time, I'm gonna invite uh, our tribal membership up here to sing a song to you. And it's a welcoming song, just as I said in my opening, Meiha yo Yehia, welcome, welcome to all of you. The interpretation of this song is welcome to all of you, welcome to our friends, and welcome to our relations. Meiha yo Yehia. Thank you. Beautiful ancestral song. 
in the memory of our ancestors. And again, welcome to one of our most precious and sacred villages here along the coast at the, on this bluff, the village of Shavagna. That's one that is an ongoing village. People think that um, our, our, <laughs> that we don't exist, but how wrong. We're still very much alive. We're very much here. And um, again, welcome. Welcome to Shavagna, to the, one of our major villages along the coast here. Again, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here today, being part of this ceremony, of this unveiling of this uh, acknowledgement, this culture to our tribe. And um, again, I want to thank everybody that was involved, all the countless hours and meetings and Zooms and whatever went on to make this happen. And uh, I'd like to personally thank the, all of you, the residents of Rancho Pablo Verdes, uh, who made this happen, along with the city council, of course. And uh, it has to go through city hall, so. <laughs> Anyway, again, thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's an honor to be here today. Have you ever heard the adage, give honor to whom honor is due? Yeah. <laughs> the vision for this monument came from this principle. Our goal was to honor and respect the first people who lived and prospered on this land. Since our project committee had tribal membership ownership, in creating and vetting this monument, I believe it is truly honoring to the past and present people of native descent of this peninsula and of LA. Before I say my thank yous, I'd like to say a few words about my personal experience. In my personal experience in this project, it was way more than plaques and stones. <laughs> um, let me explain. First of all, the process of getting this done depended on three words, consent, permission, and blessing. On one of my first visits with a native elder to seek blessing for this project, I was told many promises, but many more have been broken. But in spite of this negative history, I was warmly welcomed into relationships with the elders and leaders of the San Gabriel Band of Mission Indians. They gave me consent, permission, and blessing. This was huge. I was not only a stranger, an outsider, and a non-native, but they gave me consent, permission, and blessing. So it's been a really huge honor for me uh, to serve alongside of them. The indigenous inhabitants from here have a history of welcoming. Do you know that when Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo sailed into the San Pedro Bay on October 8, 1542, the natives welcomed him? That was 427 years ago. They didn't come with animosity. They came to the ship in their canoes and they were given beads according to the, the log. Do you know that when Sebastian Viscano cast anchor in the bay over at Catalina on November 27th, 1602, 419 years ago, the natives prepared a meal of roasted sardines and some sort of sweet potato that he couldn't describe for him. This, my friends, this was the warm welcoming and the openness that I experienced. To close, I would like to borrow a quote from Cody Bellinger after the Dodger win on Thursday night. He said, that was an unbelievable team. That was an unbelievable win. Thank you to our team of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, the San Gabriel Band of Mission Indians, and the funding partners 
What an unbelievable team. What an unbelievable win. We're going to have the unveiling now with Pastor Eric and Chief. So if you could go ahead and start the unveiling while Jerry uh, gives some remarks. Yes, I, I was given my native name about 15 years ago by my mother. Uh, and it's Tehov Sonar, Pesagasun Tokor, kind spirit woman. And I will always try to be a kind spirit. <laughs> and uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to be selected to work with Tom and Julia this, uh, all of the members of the council, it takes a team to create something worthwhile. Thank you. This much? Gather around and chief on your word, we will unveil. It's very important. This is a very significant day for Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, it, it's a tribute to the history of the Tonga San Gabriel Llanos uh, Native American tribe. And so we're, we're very proud and very fortunate. I also feel like it's the location of this, this monument and this tribute is perfectly positioned because visitors to the park who probably don't know the history of the Tongas and they'll naturally gravitate to this location and learn the history of, of the natives and the first settlers of this beautiful area. And also you can see how important this is to the residents. Your turnout's amazing. We had approximately 280 people here today and it's just a big kudos and shout out to Rec and Parks for orchestrating today's event and we I think it went perfectly. There's a familiar saying that it takes a village, in this case it took an entire tribe working as one to make this happen. Um, and it's so exciting to be able to stand here today on this beautiful day out here on the Palos Verdes Peninsula and honor the uh, Taba people and the heritage uh, from, the, uh, from this area. Councilman Dida is hitting 90 years old today, so I would like to publicly recognize Councilman Dida and, and say happy birthday, Councilman. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you. And uh, we, sir, we sure, certainly appreciate all that you've contributed to our city over the many, many years that you've given of yourself and of your time to your community. So happy birthday, Ken. Ken, happy birthday on your 90th trip around the sun. It's amazing what you have uh, done for the city and uh, done for the community. Happy birthday, and uh, we look forward to many more. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Karen. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Right. Oh my God, that is that is like been on my mind for like a while now. I, I, I cannot express how happy I am to be here today celebrating not only this, this ceremonial event, but also Councilman Dida's uh, 90th birthday. I've known, I've known Councilman Dida for over 20 years, and he, he's been uh, quite a role model and mentor to me, and I've learned so much about the history uh, from Councilman Dida, so I'm indebted to him. And that will do it for today's show. I hope that you've learned a little bit more about our rich history here in Rancho Palos Verdes. I'm Maria Soreo, and we'll see you next time on City Talk.